Hi everybody, it's me. I'm going to talk about the books I read in whatever month it was. November! So yeah, I read a few books, a lot of short stories, um, and I'll just talk about them. I'm not going to show the videos, uh, the pictures. I can't uh, do that. Oh, I haven't got my phone handy. It's charging up at the moment because I am very busy trying to work. So, but I will tell you about the books I read and show the ones I can. So I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18 Agatha Christie short stories. These were all Poirot ones. I'm trying to finish um, my collection. Um, I'm going to say my favourite. I'm just going to talk about my favourite, which was The Adventure of the Egyptian Tomb, which obviously is about an Egyptian tomb and a curse on a pharaoh. And Puaro and Hastings are brought in, travel to Egypt to investigate the deaths of several people. Um, but it's actually not a case of a curse, it's a case of murder. But I love that one because it's all set in, set in in Egypt. So, yeah. So I was just said to talk about my favourite one. So that one was really good. Uh, what was the other one I really liked? Um, the Case of the Missing Will was a very good one. Um, a will goes missing. Um, she's, uh, there's a young lady who's the only relative of this person. This person didn't believe that young ladies should get a... Uh, uh, an education and such like so he wrote into a will that if she went and did all that she, she wouldn't inherit and then he left her a task saying if he could she could find something the, the will uh, the newest the other will that says she can inherit everything he will let her have it and it's a, a, a more a newer will um but um to use her ingenuity to find it so she goes on has Poirot who does find it and she's able to inherit um, there's one book I haven't got here and I don't know where it is, it's around, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the rest of the books that I read. You know, we'll have to excuse me, I am very tired today, I've got a lot to get on with. I read a book called Sunny Days and Sea Breezes by Carol Matthews. This was a library book, which I don't have it. So Jodie goes to stay on the Isle of uh, Wight on her brother's houseboat to recover from the, the end of her, her marriage. A loss of her child and she meets her next door neighbour, Ned, and well, they start falling in love and she finds a nice life there. She starts enjoying living there. Her husband wants her back, but she didn't, you know, she's not 100% sure what to do. It's a very nice little book. Then I read Hello Norma Jean by Susan Dollars. This is a fictional story. It's the first one in a series, but I haven't seen the second one out yet. And I don't know where the book is. It is here somewhere. And there's the picture. If I can show it to you. There you go. Um, picture from something like it hot. Kate has an accident um, and at a theme park and is in and is, you know. Marilyn, who is a is a angel up in heaven is supposed to be her spirit guide to guide her back to the world of the living after she nearly dies she calls herself Norma she's sent back to help her return to live in um but actually causes more trouble than uh, she needs to it's a bit silly really I, I gave it that one three stars because it's all right but not brilliant um a book I read was The Haunting of Sutton Mill this is a H.P. Payne story about Braddock and Grey. They're on their way home um, from somewhere and they're hit in a storm. A landslide traps them on a deserted road and the only place to shelter is a ghost town, uh, Sutton Hill. This is slowly being restored by its owners, but a terrifyingly strong ghost stalks the town. Des and Sully are on it, but need help. Call the Reaper tr uh, Tracker, Tracker Jack to assist. And he has a history of the town as well. This one was absolutely brilliant because we learn a lot more about um, the Reaper Tracker Jack um, and his history and and stuff. And these books just get better and better. I absolutely love a H.P. Payne's series and I can't wait for the next one. Now, I do have this one here. <coughs> I'm just going to pick it up. It's on the floor. 
I read The Wizardry of Oz by uh, J. Scarfona and William Stillman. This is literally what it says it is. It's about the artistry and magic that went into the making of The Wizard of Oz. Remember in 1938 when they were making this film, they didn't have computer technology like we have today. They didn't have CGI, they didn't have AI, they had nothing. So everything was done, was done um, literally physically. So the tornado was made um, absolutely fantastic story, five stars. Uh, next, Her Daughter's Secret by Eleanor Moran. Me as a high flying child psychiatrist, hoping to become a partner, but needs to help Gemma, who was the last person to see her father, who's on the run, um, because he doesn't want to testify in a criminal trial. However, uh, Mia has her own daddy issues. It was an okay story. Uh, I gave it four stars. It wasn't that bad. It just dragged on a bit. Could have been shorter. This is going to be a very quick wrap up because I've got no spare batteries and my batteries are running out. Oh, I did read Murder Before Evening Song by the Reverend Richard Coles. Um, so, uh, at Champions, Champion St. Mary. Um, that's the wrong one. <sighs> i got so many books here. I'm not with it. It's this one. Basically, Anthony Bowness, a, a cousin to the patron of Champion, Champion is found dead at the back of the church. Um, he, his most pressing concern before this murder was the fact of whether or not they should put a toilet in the church. <laughs> it's just so cosy. Uh, Daniel's the only one who can keep up with everything and solve the mystery. Did take a bit to get, to, for the book to get going, I guess, because he was world uh, building, you need to world build, introduce all the characters. <clears throat> but yeah, it was a really, really good read. I really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars. I read The Maid by Nita Prose. This is the story of Molly. I think she must be on the spectrum because she takes everything very literally. She doesn't pick up cues. She finds a famous pert guest dead in his bed um, and a mystery unsolves and she's at the heart of it because she's the maid. Uh, there's all stuff 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 in there. There's um, stolen jewellery, there's drugs smuggling, it's all sorts going on. I gave it four stars. I really did enjoy the book. Uh, Rosie's ta Travelling Tea Shop is a library and a book I'm going to take it back today. Um, so she was a, a sous chef, married, um, but she likes to plan everything and have everything really scheduled out for it, including when she's going to start having children. Uh, her husband's back, packed a bag and left. He says he can't cope with the control of having everything planned out as it was. So she pretty much gets drunk and then finds out the next morning she's bought a bright pink camper van named Poppy and is going to travel around the country as a, a, a travelling tea shop, going to festivals and, and things like that. So going to Glastonbury, going to Edinburgh Fringe, Tay and Wye and so on. And on this journey she meets a lot of different people and cooks up a storm. That was fun, gave it three stars. Um, there were bits about it I thought they're never going to end up together forever because he's vegan and she's not. And um, you know. Conversations friends, let's do this one now. Sally Rooney. I, this was a, a bit of a three star. She doesn't use quotation marks when the people are talking, so it kind of all blurs into one and you don't know what's going on, whether they're talking or thinking, you just don't know. Um, I just found it a little bit unbelievable at the end. It was okay. The writing style is nice, apart from the thing with the quotes. I like quotes. I finally finished oh this huge book Jack the Ripper the um, ultimate compendium of the legacy and legend of history's most notorious killer selected by Otto Penzer there are lots of there's true stuff in here there's lots of really good short stories in here one featuring Sherlock Holmes um, the Lodger is in it by Marie Belvac the original fictional story I gave it three stars because it is a bit on the huge side and some of the stories felt a bit like filler I read Granosaurus by David Williams. This is one of, of Jennifer's books. Um, basically, it's about a boy named Spike who's, yeah, who's staying with his granny and at night she becomes a dinosaur. And he wants to put his part, he goes down and, and oh yeah. 
Uh, I read one of those books I hold, The Black Echo by Michael Connolly. This was a long one, took a while to get going. So basically he finds an old tunnel rat dead in a pipe, or somebody does, um, and it's all linked to a big heist that took place a year previously, um, where a load of safety deposit box were broken into over the Labour, I think it was Labour Day weekend, one of the weekend, or the Veterans weekend, one of the weekends they have over there. And... Um, it all comes to light because this guy tried, well did, pawn a bracelet that was stolen there. But the boxes, all the boxes were a bit of a ruse. They were only after one. And Michael Connolly's character, Harry Bosch, figures it out. It was a four star read. We read Boogie Bear as well. That was another David Williams. This is about a polar bear who drifts off a small broken off piece of... Um, iceberg ends up on a normal island meets a real like brown bears who've never seen a white bear they think the brown bear's a monster the white bear's a monster and chase her around till she falls in the mud and they realize she's just a bear which was cute oh the, the, one of the best books i read this month was again another one i hoard this haunted the haunting season collection of creepy short stories. The best to me were The Chillingham Chair by Laura Purcell, which is about a haunted wheelchair, and Confinement by Kieran Millwood Hargreaves. Now, this one really freaked me out because they set it in this stone throw from Tembury Wells, which is a town I used to live in. There's no reason for it to be set in Tembury Wells. It's not mentioned again. There is no um, reference to any of the streets in Tembury Wells. It's just, it sounds like a place they picked off the map that's in the middle of nowhere, which it is. But it really creeped me out because it was somewhere I know very well. I read The Marvelous Land of Oz. The book's here, if I can find it. It's a three book set. Uh, tells the story of Tip, who is uh, living with a Mombi, who's an evil sort of witch. Um, she, he tries to scare her by creating Jack Pumpkinhead. Mombi brings Jack Pumpkinhead to life and says she's going to boil Jack Pumpkinhead and turn him into stone. So he and Jack Pumpkinhead run away, taking with them the powder of life. But Tip is not all he seems to be. They go to the Emerald City. Um, as they're arriving, the girls of the... So the girls of Oz have joined together from all the four corners to take back the Emerald City because in the original stories, originally, uh, the whole of Oz was a matriarchy, not a patriarchy, and they're fed up of the men uh, ruling. However, Tip's not all they uh, that he turns out to be, and I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't read it. You can go and read it. And the last one I read was just a photo book. It was called, it's Walker Evans, American Photos, taken in the 1930s to the height of the Depression. Absolutely stunning set of photographs. I love looking at old photographs like this. And um, basically, that was what I read in November. I know it's a really quick wrap up, but I got no batteries charged. I need to get them charged, and I've got to find the charger. I also need to find phone the doctor's surgery to see if I can get an appointment. They're releasing some more appointments in one minute's time. So next month, hopefully, I will have a much better wrap up for you with less uh, Agatha Christie ebooks, and I can actually tell you about them properly. So I will see you soon. Bye.